हेलो एवरी वन माई सेल्फ प्रशांत एंड आई एम अ फैकल्टी ऑफ जोग्राफी एंड पोलिटिकल साइंस एट ग्रेजुएट यूर सेल्फ आई वुड लाइक टू गिव अ ब्रीफ डिस्क्रिप्शन अबाउट माई सेल्फ आई एम अ बी ए फाइनल ईयर स्टूडेंट ऑफ सी एम पी पी जी कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ अलाहाबाद एंड आई एम प्रपेयरिंग दिस लेक्चर फॉर यू अंडर द गाइडेंस ऑफ माई टीचर्स फ्रॉम जोग्राफी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सी एम पी कॉलेज एंड जोग्राफी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ अलाहाबाद दिस इज़ माई फर्स्ट लेक्चर एंड इन दिस आई हैव सेलेक्टेड अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक टू डिस्कस ऑन वेगनर्स थ्योरी ऑफ कॉन्टिनेंटल ड्रिफ्ट हाइपोथेसिस बिफोर वी स्टार्ट आई वॉन्ट टू कन्फर्म दैट यू ऑल मस्ट बी हैविंग अ पेन एंड अ नोट बुक इन यू हैंड सो दैट यू मे पेन डाउन सम इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स फ्रॉम माई लेक्चर सो वाइल वी स्टडी जोग्राफी दर मस्ट हैव ऑलवेज बीन सम क्वेश्चन सम मिस्टीरियस क्वेश्चन इन योर माइंड दैट कम्स रिगार्डिंग द ओरिजन ऑफ कॉन्टिनेंट्स ओरिजन ऑफ पेसेंस और ओरिजन ऑफ फोल्डेड माउंटेन्स that means we thought of many questions how these mountains these basins these folded mountains the continents were formed so after many research and studies many geographers geomorphologist climatologist propounded many theories regarding the same i must tell you that some of the theories include geosyncline theory of cover tetrahedral theory of lothian green continental drift theory of griffith taylor and continental drift hypothesis by alfred wegener so here in this lecture i will be talking about the continental drift hypothesis by wegener professor alfred wegener of germany was primarily a meteorologist who gave continental drift hypothesis in the year 1912 the basic need of explaining the major variations of climate in the geological past was the motive behind the promulgation of the most controversial theory of continental drift so here i must tell you that uh, you must have got my point that professor alfred begner he was a german meteorologist and he postulated his theory in the year 1912 but actually the theory of continental drift hypothesis by wegener was published in the year 1922 that is it took almost 10 years to get published and there were some of the main aims behind publishing this theory wegener's motive behind the promulgation of this theory was that he wanted to explain the major variations that in the geological past in the era of a long period of history how the climate got changed over a period of time through this theory he wanted to prove that in the past the ocean basins and continents were unstable and due to the change in the continent or the shift in the continents the climate changed with respect to time as the time passes the climate changed moving on in our lecture i want to tell you that there were two type of blocks that were present that is continental blocks as well as the ocean floor blocks so continental blocks were formed of lighter material and it was composed of cl that is silicon and aluminum it was a lighter material these blocks used to flow relatively on the denser material and it was composed of sema that is silicon and magnesium and it was without any friction that is the continental blocks were moving on sema without any frictions so we must note down we must know the densities of the material continental blocks which were made of cl have a density of 2.67 g per cm3 and the other one sema has a density of 3 g per cm3 so we should move ahead in our lecture so starting with our hypothesis Wegener supposed that several continental masses were assembled in Paleozoic era that is between 600 million years to 270 million years ago into a supercontinent called Pangaea which means all earth southern block consisting of Antarctica Australia peninsular India Africa and South America known as Gondwana land while the northern block of Pangaea comprises North America Greenland Europe north of the indian subcontinent and the remaining part of asia and it was known as laurasia wagner told 
that about to 50 million years ago that is in the Paleozoic era between 600 million years to 270 million years ago there was a supercontinent called Pangaea it was consisting of all earth and after it after 250 million years ago this whole Pangaea started to drift that is it divided into two blocks southern blocks consisting of Antarctica, Australia, Peninsular India, Africa and South America and it was known as Gondwala Nel while the other the Laurasia consisted of North America, Greenland, Europe, North of Indian subcontinent and the remaining part of Asia. Now there should have been a question in your mind that how this drift take place. So hope if you remember that I told you earlier in the note section that the continental blocks which was made up of Cial that is silicon and al aluminium used to drift over or used to move over relatively denser material and this material would consist of SEMA so there was a drift in that these two major blocks were separated by a long shallow belt of sea called Tethys Pangaea was surrounded on all sides by a mega ocean called Penthalassa so after the drift took place before moving on I must tell you that uh, when uh, all the continents were united that is it was Pangaea only then there was a huge water body that is Pangaea was surrounded by a huge water body and it was named Panthalassa Panthalassa and it means all water Panthalassa stands for all water and after the drift took place you should know that since these blocks were uh, divided into two parts so what happened it these were divided then there was a water body in between the two and it was named as the Tethys there was a considerable shift in the position of the geographical poles which caused periodic shift in the position of earth's equator and after the close of Paleozoic period Gondwala land began to break into huge crustal blocks so if you remember what was the time period or what is the time period for Paleozoic period if you remember just recall it what I have told it was between 600 million years and 270 million years ago you can clearly see in the figure that there is a supercontinent and mentioned it is mentioned as Pangaea and it is surrounded by a huge water body named Panthalassa and it is also showing what Tethys Sea I have told now after the drift took place and uh, these two were divided into Laurasia and Gondwala land so in between what came Tethys Sea the same is depicted here in the figure so look at it as the drift took place so there must have been some reasons also that why the drift took place now so Wagner told that there were some forces responsible for this drifting so the first one was the gravitational and rotational force of the earth itself and it was responsible for the northward drift that is the northward drift of the landmass that is Gondwana land and the other one was the westward drift was caused by the tidal force and uh, of which tidal force the tidal force of the moon so here basically there was two forces responsible one is the gravitational and rotational force of earth and the other one the tidal force of the moon okay now let's recall quickly what we have learned till now that earlier continental blocks were formed of lighter sialic materials and these blocks are floating on relatively denser sema and it was without any friction I repeat he told that the drift was without any friction in his hypothesis okay so uh, in earlier what was there there was a, a huge water body which which surrounded Pangaea which was a supercontinent and uh, the that name of the water body was Panthalassa and after the drift took place so what happened 
it was divided into two parts gondwana land in the north and laurasia in the south so the drift and the forces responsible for the drift were there were two forces the one was gravitational and rotational force of earth and the other was the tidal force of the moon this was all about wegener's theory of continental drift hypothesis and uh, you know after th uh, this was published in 1922 wegener he faced many criticisms for this there were many contradictions on this topic on this hypothesis so now we will learn the critical evaluation about his theory how he was criticized the critics of wegener's continental drift hypothesis fall in two broad categories the first one was the critics and writers who always attempted to search errors and discrepancies in wegener's original synthesis and the second one the scientist who attempted to modify enlarge and correct the original theory of wegener while considering its basic tenets following flaws and defects have been pointed out the forces are described by wegener gravitational force and the forces of buoyancy and the tidal force of sun and the moon are not sufficiently to drift the continents so apart tidal force as invoked by wegener to account the supposed westerly drift would need to be 10000 million times as powerful as it is at present if it has such a variation of the earth would stop completely in a year so his first criticism was on this basis only that the forces which he described in his theory that is the gravitational force of, and the force of buoyancy and the tidal force of sun these were not sufficient to drift the continents because all uh, the other geomorphologists told uh, criticize him that uh, it requires more than 10 million times as powerful force as it is present and if it has been at that time then the rotation of earth would have stopped okay so moving on to the next criticism during the time when wegener propounded his theory he tried to prove his theory on the basis that uh, there was a zigzag fit that is and between he tried to show that there was a zigzag fit between the north south america as well as africa the two continent there is a uh, uh, we can see the similarities in between when we fit together so he tried to prove on that basis his theory so what's the second criticism that both the coast of the atlantic ocean cannot be completely refitted thus the concept of juxtaposition or the jigsaw fit cannot be validated on this basis only now let's move on to his third point of criticism that is wegener didn't elaborate the direction and chronological sequence of the displacement of the continent he didn't told what kept pangaea together till its disruption in mesozoic era why the process didn't start before mesozoic era so he was criticized on this basis also that if why the drift only started in mesozoic era why not before it he was not able to prove that so on that basis also he was rejected there was also a fourth criticism of him that is as being told in his hypothesis wegener told that lighter sialic material of continental blocks i have told now that continental blocks were made up of sialic material silicon and aluminium so they moved freely without friction over denser sima but later on he described forceful resistance offered by sima so on this basis this theory was rejected so guys it was all about wegener's hypothesis as well as his criticism now the time to conclude our topic that is what were the conclusions that we we may learn from here it may be concluded that even if the most points of wegener's theory were rejected but its central theme of horizontal drift or the displacement was retained later too the skew scientist to think over and give the plate tectonics theory later in 1960s that we can consider that wegener's theory was the first or the start of 
tectonic plate tectonics in the later period so it was all about today's topic hope you enjoyed my lecture and if you find it important for you just note down the things and share more to other people so that they could also be get benefited so thanking you all stay connected with us and give a big thumbs up to us Thank you.